Hello and welcome to a recap of today's open source community hangout. We've been working on the uh, Civi Wiki project today. You can stop by github.com slash Wiki to find where uh, we are developing this open source software and get involved with our community on the discussions or on our online chat. This month is Hacktoberfest 2022. All the uh, con contributors who are active on GitHub or GitLab today, uh, this month can qualify as participants of Hacktoberfest. There's a few steps uh, in order to participate. Read through the values and set up your profile and get and find a project and an issue to contribute. The issues don't have to be code. Our project recognizes all types of contributions uh, in addition to code. So if you have an idea or a design um, that you'd like to share, there's ways we can um, acknowledge those contributions that should qualify for this Hacktoberfest, even though it's kind of oriented towards code contributions. The first 40,000 participants can have a choice between one of two prizes, a tree planted in their name, or a Hacktoberfest 2022 t-shirt. So again, all of your uh, efforts, uh, contributions to CiviWiki during this month can and should qualify for this Hacktoberfest. We've already gone through the um, steps to mark the CiviWiki project as a participant in Hacktoberfest. Today, worked through um, a few small issues. Uh, I wanted to just keep on the pulse of the project so we don't get a big list of um, questions, comments, and pull requests uh, like I did last weekend where it was a bit overwhelming. And people were also waiting for their work to be complete or acknowledged or their question to be answered or all these things. So it's kind of not fair for the contributor. We need to have active maintainers here. So I'm trying to put that role along. Uh, so we'll look at an issue of, which is actually a big one, porting our Four templates to Django template syntax. The problem we're trying to solve is a lot of our templates were written in Backbone JS, and we're moving away from having a sort of a server client architecture where you have a, a JavaScript client making API calls to a server. Uh, that architecture was a bit uh, heavy for this project and community. We needed to simplify down to a more sustainable project scope, including features, but also the architecture is a big problem. So the core of our app is um, essentially some uh, the default templates like error pages and things like that that aren't um, feature or app specific. So in other words, um, Django is made of consists of like a Django project and the project has one or more apps, which are bundles of features and uh, tables and things database tables and things like that. So our core app is essentially the default place where settings and um, maybe the home page. There's a few things I don't recall off the top of my head, but nonetheless, there's some backbone in there, and we need to port those over to Django uh, template syntax and remove our main dependencies on JavaScript. The project doesn't need a lot of JavaScript right now, particularly any libraries um, or frameworks. If we do add uh, JavaScript, it'll be small and hopefully vanilla. So we've got Daida, who has agreed to take this task, and Gorkum, our, the project co-maintainer and one of the lead developers, has responded. And I just also mentioned that I'm available to help with questions and difficulties. We want to make sure that uh, any contributor is supported in their work. Okay, so that's... Uh, Issue number 1405 that was taken, and any work Daida does contribute, we will make sure it's split out in a way that qualifies for Hacktoberfest, even if the work continues beyond Hacktoberfest, because these uh, issues are actually kind of uh, challenging. Okay, create a view to show a list of all followed users. Uh, essentially, we have functionality that lets you say, hey, that user is interesting. I want to follow their activity and get updates whenever. The or at least uh, find be able to get back to that user. It's like a bookmarking feature more than a follow feature, I think. In any case, um, following would be a lot more complicated than our software currently prov uh, provides. We've got um, 
Karan Agarwal has uh, agreed to take this task. I had a couple of questions uh, about specifically where to put the followers uh, or following. It's a bit confusing, I understand. Followers would be people who are following me and following is people I'm following. And this task involves people I'm following. They also had an uh, issue with their uh, session and it was probably because we changed secret, secret key recently, which um, Gorkin was help, able to help clarify. And then I was able to help um, Karan with their other question. So again, we're trying to make sure that people feel supported with, with their work to, uh, in contributing to CB Wiki. This issue continues. We have another continuing issue. Our homepage or our landing page had some backbone JS. It really didn't need to. It's largely a static page with a couple of uh, call to action buttons and an embedded video. Um, but when we would try to render the um, homepage without backbone, it looked like this. And it's just an example of just excessive JavaScript. Um, for a static page, it's not really uh, necessary. It adds bloat and complexity, and it also just slows down our development process. So we want to kind of preserve the look and feel of the homepage, which uh, when rendered with Backbone looked like this, and it's very elegant, and the content is the most important part. But at the same time, just being uh, based on HTML, CSS. Maybe a sprinkle of JavaScript here and there, vanilla JavaScript ideally. So yeah, Apoorva Kashyap has taken this issue and they've made considerable progress. You can see here that they've preserved the content, aesthetic, and made some small improvements, uh, changing the image here as an example. Uh, I've reviewed this. There was just some small suggestions that we would like to include. Uh, the previous template did have, I think, localization and, uh, or internationalization, meaning we can mark template texts that the user would see as translatable and then have rounds where we have people who speak various languages translate those or localize those. So in order to do that, since we're using Django template syntax, we just need to add the correct template tags. And I basically went through all of the markup and added those template tags as a way in a way that can be easily um, committed directly without uh, any other real effort. So it's a, in a way I'm kind of saying here's how to do it. If you just accept this change, you know you can commit it directly without having to lift a finger. You just click a button basically. Similarly, I'll just go. I'm just going to scroll past my um, comments. And they're all about the same thing pretty much. Gorkum has noticed there was some code that had been uh, commented out, uh, perhaps as part of this pull request or even just old crufty code that's been around. And we have the sort of mentality about decluttering and, and you know, keeping the place clean. And while it can be tempting to say, and this code, you know, took some time to write, it may be useful. It had served a function in the past. I want to keep it around. Uh, it actually makes it hard to review uh, code when there's big block comments and things like that. And overall, the this CSS gets shipped to the client. So it's also wasteful, wasting bandwidth in this case, not very much, but nonetheless, uh, we just want to remove it. So Gorkum pointed out a couple, um, a few lines of commented out code and also applied these um, diff comments, which says if you just apply this commit, it'll fix the issue that I'm pointing out. Uh, and then, yeah, this is an important one. We don't, uh, Gorkum and I and other reviewers don't want to have to sort of point out lint. It's really mind numbing. And we have linters or beautifiers that will actually format a whole document for you so that the human reviewer can do stuff that the human reviewer is needed for, like finding even commented out code actually can be identified by some uh, lint tools. But you know, finding obvious bugs or confusingly written code. That's what a com um, computer can't do and it need, you need a human in the loop. But here's an example of a lint level detail where at the end of this file, there's no new line and that's a common convention to have one blank line at the end of a file. And so I had to take my time to uh, point that out where a linter would have just fixed it basically. Nonetheless, these are not big deals and we can kindly include those in our pull request review. So thanks, Saporva. This is 
really great work overall it looks great there's just the things we're pointing out again are really low level details linting or you know cleaning housekeeping related stuff so it's not any fundamental criticism of the overall approach thanks again for your contribution and we'll try to get this merged in during hacktoberfest uh, this is the issue and finally this is actually a pretty cool change um in the I, in the vein of reducing our footprint our resource consumption and carbon footprint as a, a result as well as financially um any financial burden what happens is uh every time you commit to this project we have this pipeline that runs called a continuous integration pipeline that runs some checks on our code we call it ci workflow here that's the name we've put to it and it uh, then sort of the job is to run some tests against our python code these tests include uh sort of like unit tests of all of our well not all but uh, increasingly our a crucial app lo application logic we're going to add more test coverage but they also run things like linting and potentially other um, tasks that are low-level details for housekeeping purposes and right now this ci pipeline has you know a big task to run all the tests which that's just going to take as much time as it does we might be able to optimize those in some way but it also has a task where we're essentially installing the installer. Our project is using the Poetry Package Manager, which is a package manager for Python dependencies. Uh, without getting too much into it, it's just a way of defining what your ingredients of your project are and keeping them fresh. And in order to install that package manager, it's taking here around 20 seconds, let's just say, for simplicity. And then poetry is used to install these dependencies now previously this uh, step for installing dependencies could take well 30 seconds to a minute but what we did is we we cached the result of the step here whenever the dependencies are the same in other words if the ingredients are the same we're not going to uh, the ingredients uh, are the same and the versions are the same we're not going to reinstall those because they're still the shelf life is still fresh in our analogy there uh so we go from a minute down to zero seconds because of caching well to four seconds it takes a little bit of time to load the cache which is kind of big uh so we were thinking let's also see if we can shave off a little bit of time from this poetry installation step by by caching it and um this since it's the first time that's run um this step took zero seconds because it didn't find any any cache but then it installs it so let's take a look at this pull request because in this comment is an example by Dieter of the difference when poetry is cached um, the loading of poetry takes one second from a cache ver cache hit so we can see here that it did find it and it's this many bytes uh, 25 megabytes which is actually pretty considerable so that's 25 megabytes of files that we didn't need to pull from the uh, internet and configure which is a resource saving bandwidth resource savings um, as well as uh, cpu savings of moving those files into the right locations on the disk so we can just restore that using the unique identifier and then we still need to spend a little bit of time with poetry installation we can see that poetry says oh i'm already installed so i don't need to call to the server and get those files and put them in the right place right so it's already done over here but it has a little bit of a configuration it needs to do um, so we still need to have this step to make sure that poetry you know executable or binary file is uh available for the uh, subsequent steps if there if it's needed which uh, since it's cached again it's not needed and so what we're doing is we're shaving uh, we're saving thing around we're shaving off time and cpu resources and saving the planet <laughs> a little bit at a time i know it's kind of silly but these the, these steps take real energy and real resources to complete 
And oftentimes when we're not paying for those resources, since we're getting this from GitHub, it's really easy to just say, yeah, we'll do everything. Uh, we don't really care about efficiency. But so this actually saves around 16 seconds and all the compute time and bandwidth that come along with that. So yeah, we just merged this. Uh, it was a great, uh, great work, very timely. Let me see. Oh, refresh. There it is. It's merged. Yeah. Um, let's just take a quick look at the code. I know I've been uh, going a little bit long on this, but um, view the file. If you're working on a project on GitHub and you want to use GitHub Actions for your continuous integration workflow, here's ours, and you can borrow from this as much as you like. We name it continuous integration workflow. It's going to, when we open a pull request uh, against the develop branch, it's going to run these all these um, steps as well as any push to other branches. Uh, we call this generally the uh, Python tests job and the job consists of several steps. We need to check out the repository so we have the code ready. We're a Python project so we need to set up uh, Python which should have an upper quote. Uh, these are just prefab actions, and we specify our Python version. Then here's the new edition. We are going to see if there is a file in our local cache that meets, that matches this key. It starts with .local, then it uh, joins the operating system version, which we're running these on Ubuntu, I think it said. But we potentially could run these on other operating systems, so we need to include that in the file name otherwise we might try to run a uh, look for a cached mac os x file on an ubuntu environment and those wouldn't work although we're you know only running again ubuntu so this is a little bit extra and what it does is then hashes this file main.yaml which is the file i'm reading here so github workflow main.yaml and this is useful because the contents of this file, anytime this file is changed, it'll basically cache poetry again, which includes the next step. If we install poetry here, we might bump the version to a new poetry version, which would change the contents of this file and cause the hash to be different, which would in turn trigger a new cache um, invalidation, basically, and then it would do its job and cache it, and on subsequent runs, then this step would be skipped. So it's really a clever uh, way that um, Dieter defined this. And that's about it. So we install poetry and install the cache dependencies, and again, or check if they're cached. We're using a similar approach. In this case, our poetry.lock is the manifest that has all the exact versions of all of our dependencies and their relationships and their own hashes. So anytime that changes, we will recache all the versions so that we don't have to reinstall them on subsequent runs. If there's no cache hit, then we'll install them. But if there is cache, then we'll just use it. Pretty cool, saving resources. After that, we do some regular Django stuff, We're running migrations and collecting static files. Uh, so everything up here is pretty Python specific, poetry specific, here is Django specific. And this we're using, um, Flake 8, and uh, we've got black formatting our code locally. So we're making sure the code passes lint checks. So yeah, this is a fairly Python poetry specific um, CI workflow, but feel free to uh, grab any of those changes that are relevant to your project. All right, well, this has been another open source community hangout. Again, stop by github.com slash civiwiki to get involved with the project and make sure to register with Hacktoberfest or follow their participation guidelines so that any of your contributions here can uh, credit towards your Hacktoberfest participation. Thanks again for your time. Have a great day and I hope you're doing well.